Hey everyone, this is DJ. And this is Ish. And this is Season 7 of Better Let Me Tell You. band jose saw no it's the mm-hmm. third and final installment of the trilogy of the weekend oh that's right you posted that the other day yeah it's like right. my christmas but- <laughs> i just want to let you know that we have a pop-up this weekend and they're going to be live streaming his show from um rio from in brazil and i'm going to miss it live because of being pampoyo mm-hmm. but that's what you do when you're building a chicken empire it's, welcome it's, it's everybody to uh, yes to episode one three fourteen of pero let me tell you well, you can probably stream it while we're there. Just put okay. It, put I it just want to pat myself on the back that I got the number. Correct. I was going to say I, I wanted to finish the thought, but then I wanted to congratulate you on on getting. I it. almost said one fourteen, but you know what? I'm I'm choosing to ignore I that. I wonder what was episode one fourteen. Ooh, we should look it up. That would have been season two, three, like the beginning of season three. Yeah, that would have been the pandemic. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well then maybe it, maybe it's the one where Tom and Rita got COVID. <laughs> no wait wait hold on what am i talking about no wait how many we do well there's 52 no, yeah, weeks yeah, a year yeah 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 and we do about 45 episodes a year right so yeah so, so yes yeah, so it'll be season three yeah yeah yeah, yeah but, that but would, early season, season three. three was us at miami baked okay i'm thinking of the picture oh, okay i can't our, turn our my head right picture. now but yes yes I, um yeah, yeah. <laughs> um oh, but yeah. now i want you to be I, I want you to like stream it while we're cooking because i know how much you like to hear the weekend you know when when we're when we're at pop-ups in general yeah i know on the weekend on the weekend and the best part about it is that now you know maybe what he'll be saying is i love you brazil instead of i love you los angeles yeah the, the reason it's just saying that because <laughs> the weekend has a live album um live at sofi stadium the after hours till dawn tour and you know usually especially when you go see somebody live they're always like i love you miami i love you new york you know eh, miami you know let me hear right, you, you know, whatever. Yeah. but in in this live album that <laughs> was recorded in la it's like every two words it's like i love you los angeles all right los angeles like get yeah. up los angeles like i fucking yeah. love you los angeles it's like but, oh my god yeah. abel stop it with la like <laughs> Lord, if i that's going to be like i can't feel my face when i'm with los angeles yeah <laughs> like, <laughs> so <laughs> I, I you know it's funny i i obviously listen to that live album a lot and i love live music and it's funny because when i'm in the in the in the car with tristan he's like can you take it off i don't like the concert i don't like the people screaming and i'm like dude that's like the best part what are you kinda, talking about it's kind of great and I, I mean whatever i'm a sucker for a rearranged uh arrangement of a song when it's live you know changing the arrangement you mean that yes i was like rearranging the rearrangement the arrangement yeah, yeah. um <laughs> so anyway yeah and so he's coming out with the third installment of his trilogy okay so he's in this is heaven oh that's right hell purgatory and uh, yeah heaven. after okay. hours was hell um from don fm um his last album was purgatory and this is heaven so that's why the cover of the album is his um him as a little boy oh yeah. i always wanted to open up a club where that was the theme what heaven hell and purgatory it'll be three layer three levels which okay which what music would each I know what my hell would be. Well, well, for hell, I was thinking more like you know, like like aggressive, like raw. My no, my hell. If it was three levels, hell would be house music for me. Mm-hmm. I'd be like, get me the hell out of here okay. because this is awful. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know you like house music. I, I do. think it's awful, awful. You I think it's like clearly never danced on a platform. Sure yeah, this. yeah, that's <laughs> something that's not on my <laughs> list of things to do. I, I think it's awful. Just awful. Oh, it's so much fun when you're in that. Just in that moment where you're just like, let's just go. Doom, 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 doom. Yep. No. Yep. No. So anyway, but my idea for it is not what your personal music hells or heavens are. Is So hell would be like just very like aggressive rock, like, you know, like prog rock, whatever. Then, um, then purgatory would just be like, you know, pop, like current, whatever's on the radio, mm-hmm. you know, very middling. And then, like, Heaven would be very, like... Um, ambient music? Ambient, yeah. Like Enya? Not like Enya, but like... Like a remix of Enya? Sure. Not, not that either. A remix of um, Sail Away, <laughs> Sail Away. Do you know what I think of when I hear that song? Pure Moods? 
Sail away. No, I think oh, no. Crystal Light. It's it, that's right. I was. It was in a commercial, but I couldn't remember what it was for. Yeah. Oh, which, by the way, thank you to our listeners who responded what you would get when you wrote to Pueblo, Colorado. I had that as my first topic to bring up. And I'm sorry to one of our listeners who apparently <laughs> wrote to Pueblo, Colorado, um, <laughs> wrote to Pueblo, Colorado for these famous catalogs, but then she moved. I told her she should call them up. Hi, I'm calling. Pu- Hi, what's the number to Pueblo, Colorado? <laughs> And un pueblo, it can't be that big. Okay, g- good luck with that. <laughs> like the Pueblo, Colorado Chamber of Commerce. Listen, I'm sure that in this age of Google, she can backtrack and find a phone number for that office. I guess. So what was the office again? It was in Pueblo, Colorado. Right, but it was like the, the U.S. consumer. The consumer report, no sé qué cosa. So basically, near as we could figure out. Right. Because there was no Google, so you couldn't, Google. so you couldn't just go online to get information about things. You would send this request to Pueblo Colorado, and they would send you like different brochures on things like you know like weight loss and how to kick smoking and consumer care for like your car and, and things like that. And some of them were free, and some of them you had to pay for. I wonder what content was in the one you had to pay for. I can't imagine because none of this sounds entirely thrilling. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> I imagine that in the 70s and 80s, getting a pack of brochures in the mail was very exciting. Just like getting a box of CDs in the 90s was exciting through Columbia House. <laughs> or like when you opened your own travel agency in middle school. Yeah, Miami Days off to travel. Yeah. And then I got thousands of brochures <laughs> of Royal Caribbean. I, w- I literally called Royal Caribbean. I'm like, hey, uh, hi. I would like a thousand brochures. And it's funny because I, I, I aimed high. That's a lot. I was like, you know, I'm listeners. I made up a fake travel agency. I think you when told I was the story. Yeah, I have. Um, but as a recap, I made up a fake travel agency because um, I've always loved ships. <laughs> I'm obsessed with ships, so I wanted to have all these like, con- like all these magazines and promotional posters mm-hmm. and all this on ships on cruises. So I was like 12 years old. I made up a fake travel agency and I just would call the cruise lines mm-hmm. and. Um, be like, hi, can I have a thousand copies of your brochure for the <laughs> Eastern and Western Caribbean? And I'll never forget Royal Caribbean, Carnival, and CL. They all sent me stuff. It was Dolphin Cruise Lines, who no longer exists, that asked me for a tax ID number. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, Really, Dolphin? Really, Dolphin? That's why you're out of business. Really? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I, I, had a, I, had, um, I had a lot of stuff on like all the cruises of Carnival, especially the fantasy class. Mm-hmm. You know, the fantasy, the ecstasy, the elation, the imagination, the inspiration, the fascination, the sensation. All the Asians. All the Asians. Like, I, mm-hmm. it's funny because our listeners who are listening to my voice right now, you know, you went on one of those cruises. Of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or at least know someone who did. Or you went on a Quinceañera cruise on the yeah. imagination, the Carnival imagination. I went on the imagination when it was new. Yeah. Like, I remember being like, I bug con huevo de carne. Yeah, it has an atrium. <laughs> yeah, it was a big deal. Look on the imagination. Listen, I remember when we went on the ecstasy, I thought my parents were rich. <laughs> I get it. And, you know, we were dirt poor. But I thought my parents were like, oh, my God, we're going on a cruise now. Long are the days that seven of us would be in a Cutlass Supreme going to Disney World. And we would all sleep in the same. Mind you, that was like two years earlier. And we would all sleep in the same room. And my mom would make sandwiches. Hey. <laughs> But Don't. now we were on a Caribbean cruise. Ooh, on the ecstasy. <laughs> yes. I go in a buffet. <laughs> oh, that is the best part. It is. And you know what's so funny? As somebody who knows, you know, I've been on a lot of cruises and I know about cruises. Like I I could like give tutorials on ships. I'm right? surprised you haven't. People always fall for the same thing that when they get on the ship, they go to the buffet. And that's the worst thing to do. You should go to the main dining room. Or whatever other dining they have. Why? Because the main buffet at that time. First of all, the best food of the buffet is not on the first day. Okay, fair. It's usually on sea days. And also, it's packed. Because everybody is going to the main dining okay, room. Okay, yeah, that's true. So, hay una de gente. It's filled with lines. And then, you know, if you're in a group, you have to be, you know, searching for a table. Oh, or are they leaving? Are true. they leaving? You know, why don't you get up and leave? You know, and people are like sitting there. Um, and whereas you could just go to the main dining room and have lunch. Oh, Darian's cruise tips. <laughs> <laughs> tips for cruising. <laughs> cruising with Darian. No, that, no, no, no. No. No, that's a different show. <laughs> 
With house music. With house music. And, and I'd be and, so miserable. And potentially behind an OnlyFans paywall. <laughs> no. Oh, my gosh. You know what I heard today? Somebody actually forwarded to me on my personal Instagram that, I mean, it was like a meme, but that some kid was like, oh, I found out that my aunt has an OnlyFans where she's making tamales in a song. And I said the Cuban version of that would be La Tia making croquetas. 100%. In a song. And you know what? In the grand scheme of OnlyFans, that's nothing. Oh, no. You know what? I would do that. Yeah. Have I ever told you or shared with our listeners <laughs> when I was trying to explain OnlyFans to my mother? No, but now I want it. <laughs> we are now, we've, we are clearing the deck of all other topics. So. The next 45 minutes are going to be about this. So... <laughs> And my father, my father totally knows what OnlyFans is. My father's like, oh, yeah. Because your, your father's all into like, la, la cosa la farondula. El, el OnlyFans. Uh-huh. And, you know, I'm like, mira, mamá, eh, eh, tú tienes la habilidad de tener, por ejemplo, una página y la gente te ven y te das acceso a tu vida. Y depende en cuánto acceso tú te quieres dar. You know, right. puede ser cosas de diaria, cotidiana. Um, or it could be like, you know, maybe... You know, if, if, if it's a, like a, a really pretty sexy woman, it could be, you know, she could show like her lingerie or like right. a swimsuit. But, you know, it de- you know you determine how, how much far? you want to show or not show. And, you know, there's people that come out naked. There's people that do porn. There's people that, right. you know, um, some couples that show what they do in their bedroom and, and so on and so forth. And she's like, pero espérate. <laughs> All great stories of Neri start with that phrase. Pero como que la gente se graban teniendo sexo? And I'm like, yeah, you know, there is an OnlyFans for that. And she's like, pero que, pero, pero, pero que? Yo no, yo no lo entiendo. Yo no lo entiendo. Pero como se graban? And I'm like, con la cámara? Wait, that was the part she didn't understand? No, she said, como se graban? And I'm like, con la cámara. Pero por que? And I'm like, porque pueden ganar mucho dinero. Yeah. Pueden ganar miles y miles de dólares. Pero la gente no pueden trabajar. Porque eso es una depravación. Pero yo no entiendo. No, no, hey, no. sex work is work. Yo no entiendo. Yo no entiendo como... She just didn't understand the, the the concept that, first of all, that it's willingly. Right. That these, a lot of the people that they do only one fans day. are like mo- regular people. They're not like porn stars. They're regular people that do this on the side, just like un patain. Okay, so then your mother understands the concept of a porn star. Sí. Versus. Sí. I can get trabaja en una película de relajo. That's what they call it. Okay, versus somebody like who does amateur. Okay, so she, so she understands there's a difference. I don't think she... I don't think she understands the difference. I just think that my mom thinks that people that do porn and películas de relajo, they call it, live in sort of like a vacuum. Like they're not real. Yes. Okay. Right. But they're not like taxpaying individuals that have a daytime job and do this as a side gig. Like she would never think that she knew someone at Publix who also has an OnlyFans. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. So it's just, she just didn't understand. My mom's like, you only, my dad's like, you only fan. Uh, la gente lo hace en la pandemia. Mucha gente lo empezaron a hacer. And my dad, my dad was very well informed. My dad's like, si, <laughs> si aquí en Miami siempre yeah. corren la gente en los balcones, en mm-hmm. brico, haciendo eso. And my mom was just like, pero como es eso? Pero que depravación? Pero como que una pareja se casa? Pero la gente no tiene respeto. And I'm like, mom, those are arguments that for another day. I'm just talking to you about the business model. I'm just, this is a TED talk right now. This I'm is just not- talking to you about the business model of OnlyFans. Um, you know, everybody has their opinions on it. I have my opinions on it. Um, but, you know, I, I've said it. If I was an orphan, I would do it. If you're an orphan. Well, yeah, because I wouldn't have family. And because you wouldn't have fam, because if you didn't have family, you would do an OnlyFans, right? So you think there's shame around the OnlyFans? No, I just don't want to have to deal with it. They don't have to find out in this day and age of of Google. Of but the why internet? would you do in the OnlyFans? Why? Yeah, because I because oh, it's easy money, right? But there's a lot of other ways of doing easy money. I but not from your own home and bed. There are like. Do you think that maybe it's because there's a part narcissistic behavior? Oh, a hundred percent. You've seen my Instagram. Right. Because I totally believe it's narcissistic in part narcissistic behavior. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Again, you're, you you've seen my Instagram. Okay. And you're okay with that. Yeah. Okay, well, you know. <laughs> Listen, I know who I am. I don't <laughs> I make no no right, bones but, there, about there, it. but there's a difference between posting, you know, a sort of quirky, sort of sexy pictures on your Instagram and having an OnlyFans where you record yourself 
having sex. Well, I also or, didn't say what that. I would be doing on the OnlyFans. Right. You know. There's a line, you know, there's there's people who do solo action and then there's, you know, people who just install like a take a ticket machine. I mean, I just think that and it's not shame. I don't think you're a terrible person if you do OnlyFans. And if I'm talking about OnlyFans, I mean like the people that like are full out on OnlyFans. Yeah, yeah, who are really into um, it. Yeah. I, I don't think you're a bad person. I don't think you're a terrible person. I don't think you should be shamed. I mean, you do what you do. Um, but when people say, oh, and, you know, I, I do it because I needed money. It's like, no, nah, nah, nah. there's a lot of ways that you can get money <laughs> oh, that doesn't require are you you know exposing yourself online yeah but i mean again it, it's easy money i mean you can't get any easier than setting up a camera and opening an account yeah you, what on only fans yeah right and you think that people that really make substantial money on only fans aren't always recording oh, of course they are they are so it's not that easy no sorry what i mean by easy money is in the grand scheme of things it's something you can you know you ha- yes you have to dedicate time to it obviously because if you're gonna be successful you have to the, put the, in the, the people the, that make the, the i mean I've seen, I've seen a lot of documentaries Same. on this the people that <clears throat> it's a full-time job money it is it a full-time, full-time time job right a hundred percent yeah so when you make the argument of like oh i'm doing it because it's easy money Money. It's like, no, you don't. You're doing it because there's a part narcissistic element to it because there's a lot of ways where you can make passive income and easy money. I mean, if you want to make easy extra money, you know, I mean, you could be a call center rep at home and, you know, for a cruise line going back to cruises. I bet, I bet <laughs> then you have to deal with people who are on cruises. They're very, well, they're but, very but upset what I'm saying afterwards. Is there's, there's a lot of ways that are, when I mean easy, I mean that, you know, you're not outside, you know, you know, breaking it's break, you know, rajando una, una piedra right, with an right. axe. You know, there's a lot of ways that you can make some income at home or, or doing there's there's options so like that's why when people are like eh, i'm like really now i couldn't understand people that maybe do like an only fans for like their feet right that there's no connection to them and all they have to take pictures of their feet but i i just think i i've i've always thought this and Even it, that i'm sure requires work and it's not shaming people that are in the sex industry whether you like it or not, and 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 th- this is a conversation you could have for hours. Whether you like it or not, there's still a judgment to people that do. Oh, of course, porn. the stigma. There is a. There stigma. shouldn't be, but there, there is. Th- but there, there, but is. there is. Whether it's right or wrong, there is. So if you choose to do something like OnlyFans, and there's people who shame you, and there's a stigma around it, and you lose opportunities, or imp- it may not be fair, but you can't then be like, oh, my God, this is so unfair. I'm so oh, surprised. Yeah, yeah. It's it's not a surprise. Right? Because the images on the internet live forever. <laughs> forever. And that's something that, you know, when you you take that step, it's sort of how I feel about tattoos. Right? Mm-hmm. Because, like, I always think, like, okay, you, have, you got a tattoo, right? It's permanent. Are you going to feel as passionate about it in 20 years as you do now? And when your life is in a different place, are you going to be okay with it? If you are, that's fine. But Mm. I think it's one of these things that you really have to think about it. Because you don't know what twists and turns your life takes. Right. Right? And will you be in a position sometime down the line... When you're in your 40s, 50s, whatever, that maybe having an OnlyFans is sort of an anchor and it's going to affect you, whether fair or unfair. Right, but just a reality of. But it's a reality. And, you know, I think that sometimes people make these decisions and they're not thinking about like long term. Because when you're 25. It, it, especially people who start in their 20s. Yeah. When you're 25 and you're hot and you're, you know what? Así cualquiera. Yeah. Yeah. But what about when you're 45 and you could still be really hot, but, you know, maybe your life is different at that point. You know, maybe some people in terms of a relationship aren't going to feel as comfortable. You know, maybe, I don't know, you want to run for, well, running for office doesn't mean anything That doesn't mean anything anymore. Actually, it might help you. (laughs) Actually, yeah, it (laughs) probably would. If the worst thing you've got on your resume is an OnlyFans, I mean, mean, go for it. (laughs) Have at it. At this point, we've seen you doing everything. (laughs) I think one of the greatest things was that... um, what is it? Only flans. Only flans. That's great. That I'll sign up for. Well, wait, you're not already on it? <laughs> Only flan. Because I've seen you devour a flan. I have. Many a flan. I'm I'm happy when people say that they don't know anybody who likes fl- flan more than me. That makes me really happy. I, I'm not happy that makes you happy. You know our friend that makes the flans? Yeah. Our friend the flaner? <laughs> the fl- <laughs> La flanera. <laughs> La flanera. So we have this friend that she makes the best flans. Yes. I mean, 
They are incredible. And her cheese flan oh, is like... So good. She makes it every year when we have our, our friend Christmas dinner. And when I have it, like, I have to, like, prepare she, myself. She almost just makes one for you. I have to prepare myself. I like to separate myself a little bit from people. You do. You disappear. I do. Because I want to enjoy it. But <laughs> I want to have it. Like, I want the moment for myself and my taste buds. <laughs> like, when I first take the first bite out of the flag, I'm like... This is what like Nirvana feels like. Yeah, you don't want to be bothered by talking conversation. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to be bothered by the no. outside. Just leave me alone with my yeah, cheese yeah. flan. You know what? We all deserve that moment. We do, and I get it from flan. And you get it from flan. <laughs> and you know what? What could be more wholesome? Some people get it from drugs. Some people get it from alcohol. I get it from flan. flan. A little egg. A little milk. <laughs> some cheese. <laughs> Okay, but seriously, is flan delicious? It is delicious. So, what am I, am I sitting here mira, telling you it's mira, not? Mira, flan is one of those things that even bad flan is good. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Flan is the dessert equivalent of pizza. Yes. Even bad pizza is good. Yeah. I mean, some e- crappy pizzas are crappy. Okay, but even bad pizza, te lo puedes comer. Yeah. Because look, like, you know what pizza sucks? Mm-hmm. Is Elio's Don't. pizza. The, the frozen ones? Yeah, like oh, yeah. the frozen That sucks, but... But I will... I, but it makes me happy. It does. It, <laughs> it makes me happy. It takes me back to, like, being a kid. The other so, day, I bought some for Tristan. I'm like, this fucking sucks. But you know what? I'm, I'm here for it. Like, I don't. Yeah. like, you might as well just eat the box it comes like, in. This tomato sauce probably isn't even from a tomato. Like... It's fine how you sauce. <laughs> Uh, well, there goes another sponsorship. We're not going to get. I mean, really, were, we, were we vying for that Elio's pizza we sponsorship? Vying, listen, we're not vying for it. But if they were to show up with with a contract, I wouldn't say no. Oh my god, Elio's pizza! If you're listening, you know you should totally do revamp your pizza, and we could be the taste testers. <gasps> yes. Okay. Okay. I like this. Now we're. I'll never forget this. Some years ago, on the Food Network, back when they used to put content that was food related, <laughs> other than you know five thousand reality champions. shows. Um, they had this, like, you know, when they would have those, like, behind the scenes, like, uh, like moments at uh, the Ben and Jerry's plant factory in Vermont. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they had official ice cream tasters. <gasps> oh. And I'm like, how? Like, why? Like, how do I do that? Like, okay, I want to do that. <laughs> and I also want to be the person who names the Crayola crayons. Oh, those are fun. Yeah. Yeah, but you can't eat those. Okay, fine, but I still get to be the namer. Oh my gosh, it must smell so good in that factory. Oh, yeah. That whiff of opening up a Crayola crayon box and taking that sniff and being like, oh, man. Man, wax never smelled so good. Yeah, it does. Ah, you have meal. But I want to bring it back a little bit to, you know, we were talking about OnlyFans and, you know, things you do you, you, you might regret later in life and have consequences. Um, I know you mentioned earlier... Dancing with the Stars just announced their cast. Oh, yes. And honestly, this time around, there's only like three people on there that I know. A Carl Winslow. Carl Winslow, Tori Spelling. Okay. And there's someone, like, there's one other, so like. I, I, do you know who I want to win? Actually, no. I say either three or four. I'm the okay, fourth do you know who I want to win? Who? Okay. Of the people there. Okay. I love Carl Winslow, okay. right? Reginald Reginald Bell 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 so my heart will go to him. Like, I, I hope he wins. Okay. It's Carl. Like, we love Carl. Yeah, of course. I do not like Tori Spelling, but I would want her to win because she needs the money. That's true. She has a lot of financial problems. She does have a lot of financial crushing debt <laughs> by her own admission. You know that I hadn't seen her. And, and, and again, I'm you know, I'm not that person to pick on people, um, but I hadn't seen her in a while. And then I did, and I was like, "Wow, it's a different person." Yeah, yeah. I, it, wow, like, like really, Tori Spelling, and was this really necessary? You know, and I, I don't want to. I mean, right? You're these, not trying to be that guy. But I don't want to be that guy, to like, especially on a woman, like of a age, her like that, especially. Yeah. Um, but it's like, wow, like you know, you. Uh, it's not that Tori Spelling was a bombshell, but she was, you she know, was cute, cute, you know, yeah, whatever, yeah. you know, and. Like really, uh, I, I yeah. She just got caught up in that that Hollywood of it all. But this isn't about Tori Spelling. One of the cast members, and again, oh, yes. at this point, it's all like Bachelor rejects and Olympians and, and the Olympians. Athletes. I'm good for the Olympians, Olympians. I'm good for the athletes are depending on what sport they do better. Like the football players never do well. They're they're too lumbery. No, football players actually do well. So many times, athletes generally do well. 
the ones that don't do well are politicians. Well, yeah. and then there's you know a Miss Kate Goslin. Kate Goslin. But go ahead, go ahead, go yes. ahead. So they cast um, Anna Delvey. And for those of you who don't know, Anna Delvey, I mean, she has documentaries about her. She has, there was a show on Netflix or a movie or whatever about her. She basically was a con artist um, that she ran up this whole con scheme in New York City where she was able to con people out of money and that she was making a business and then she would stay for free at like, well, not by will, but not willingly. She was staying at like this high-end boutique hotel and she didn't pay and eventually she got caught as a con artist and she was sentenced to like, what, two years in jail or something like that? And she's now out, I think, on parole. And she is doing Dancing with the Stars with an ankle bracelet. Ankle monitor, not an ankle bracelet. An ankle bracelet would be cute. An ankle monitor. <laughs> this is someone who, and I know I know you have your opinions. I don't I don't know her, quote unquote. I know of, I know of her story because it was all the rage and a bunch of podcasts I listened to about true crime. I have such an issue with her being on Dancing with the Stars. Not the least of which is that she's not a real star <laughs> to begin with. But why is she there? Like, who had the idea that she would be a good addition? That this is somebody who ultimately America is going to want to root for, right? Because that's ultimately, I like to believe that the crux of, of Dancing with the Stars is either celebrities that we love, that we haven't mm-hmm. seen, like Carl Winslow, or a redemption story, right? You know, somebody who, like a, even like a Tony Braxton, right? Where it's not a redemption, but, you know, she had her heart condition and she wanted to see and prove she could do it, or, you know, Cloris Leachman being her age and proving she. So that tends to Valerie be. Valerie Harper. Valerie Harper could have died any week, yeah. you know, on the dance floor. Like, that's the arc that we've been given right to believe that that's what dancing with the stars is about it's that redemptive narrative i don't know that this broad has any redemption in her and i don't know why we care if she has it well but i i even i don't even see it from the point of view of redemption i see it from the point of view of we're rewarding bad behavior and here's my issue with her being on there have been people on dancing with the stars who have gotten in trouble um, like, for example, I, Little Kim went on not too long after she was released from jail for perjury. Um, and she even did a whole skit where she was coming out of, like, the jumpsuit, the, the orange jumpsuit. And, you know, she took it off and then started to dance. But Little Kim was a rapper. She was known for she her did art, something, right? right? So a lot of people that have been on the show that have had a past, like a criminal like past or have done something that they were in jail or whatever. These are people that were known for something else, right? Whether they were a musician, an athlete, whatever type of celebrity. Mm -hmm. So yes, they messed up. They paid their debt to society and you know, they redeemed themselves and dancing with the stars came calling. I'm totally for that. I, you know what? Good, good. But the problem with this girl is that, she is she is known for this so we are rewarding their bad behavior because i believe that they make a significant amount of money not only for being signed but then every week that they're yeah. on yeah right there's a point where they're making six figures a week yeah that's why we want spelling to win yeah further up the ladder when you know when there's less and less contestants but they're making a considerable amount of money for being on that show so we are rewarding bad behavior especially the type of bad behavior that she did you know, she's still on probation. And I don't even care that she's still on probation. It's that, again, this woman is known for being a con, a con artist and for, a criminal. you know, a criminal for this is what she did. And you're bringing her on for that. Right. You know, you're bringing her on for that. You know, she is on the same cast as like two Olympians who were just in Paris. Right. Representing the United States, who won medals, beloved who, characters beloved, from the nineties. Yeah, but, but these people that work their asses off to be to the Olympics, and they're sharing the stage with somebody who is known for being a fraud, right? Right, because that is what she's known for. She's not known for anything else. So I think that that is where the real big fail is by the producers, and I, I think they're getting some some flack. Yeah. yeah. Do you think it would have been? similar or different if they would have had well no actually not if i mean they had carol baskin on Mm -hmm. from tiger king do you think it's a i mean obviously it's different because carol baskin was not a criminal right she was not known for being a criminal yeah but let's say if you had had joe exotic on right Mm -hmm. do you think it would have been something similar i think it would have been something similar i mean i think that joe exotic from tiger king and carol baskin i see why they did it 
but they were infamous because of the documentary. I still think they're poor casting choices, okay. right? Um, and I question those casting choices as well. But at least you could sort of make the argument that's like, okay, we casted these two people because they were from a documentary that was a phenomenon, a worldwide phenomenon, which it was, yeah. right? Let's not forget how big Tiger King was. Thank you, pandemic. Yeah. Um, these people were a phenomenon and we're, after, you know, cashing in on that and right. putting them on the show. So you get it. So, again, I still question it and I still think it's sort of bad casting, but I get it because they were affiliated to a show that was a phenomenon with powerhouse ratings that culturally what was a cultural moment that's true right but that's not the case with this woman like this right. woman is known solely for her fraud like for what she did for committing a crime so yeah yeah i just my, my whole thing is i i think it's just a it's a bit indicative of, of a bigger thing now that we're we are deciding that there are some people who are like oh they committed a crime but we're okay with it dun, 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 dun. who's been your favorite I, I was like really into dancing with the stars at one point you know like many people Same. but then I, I stopped knowing who the stars were i still think <laughs> sabrina ryan was robbed both Did you know times. that i was thinking about you the other day because of that, when they when they made the announcement of the yeah. cast, I was like, I wonder what Sabrina Bryan is doing today. Yeah. <laughs> Sabrina Bryan, she's from the Cheetah Girls. Like, I didn't even know her from the. I, I the only Cheetah Girl that I knew was Raven Simone, and that's because it's Raven Simone, right? right. Um, but S Sabrina Bryan was this girl from the Cheetah Girls, from you know that group from the Disney Channel, and she was the first contestant, I believe, in Dancing with the Stars. That her first score was like almost perfect. Oh wow. She did Don't Don't You, she, don't you With yes, Your Girlfriend. Right. And it was incredible. Her first, first dance. I think she got like, I think she got all nines. Coño, out the yeah. gate. And um, every week she was like incredible. And then she got voted off because she wasn't that popular. Right. Right. And then they brought her back a few seasons later. Oh, for, for the All-Stars. For the All-Stars. Like people that maybe got voted off too early. And she got voted off again in the sixth week. <laughs> And she was perfect. She the, the week she got voted off, she got like a perfect ten, like a, a perfect thirty. You know. Wow. Um, and then there's other people that win that just are like, mm -hmm. I thought the season with with Melanie from Scary Spice that, was that so season good. was great. I think oh. that was like the fourth or fifth season. It was early ish on, yeah, yeah. That season was great. Like everybody was good. Oh. I've said it before. I think one of the, not one of the best people on that show, but one of the, like the people that I thought made the biggest sort of turn was Rob Kardashian. Oh yes, you always you do mention, and that. I'm no fan of the Kardashians whatsoever. Yeah. But I remember Rob started with like two left feet. Rob doesn't have a fan base per se. Yeah, he has a family, and he started <laughs> off with two left feet, and he made it to the finale. And he really got good. Like, yeah. he really started dancing well. And I was like, you know, that is what that show is about. You know, like, that's people that saying. aren't dancers, they doubted themselves, and they learned how to dance. But and that's what I'm saying. Like, to me, that's the crux of Dancing with the Stars is, you know, people who are either Olympians who are really good in this other thing but don't think they can dance or people who, you know, are, are trying to just prove to themselves. Like, Liz Elizabeth Berkeley, who said that, you know, after Showgirls, she had she stopped dancing because she was, you know, all the flack that she got. So this for her was personal. Things like that. Like, that to me is the narrative. that She you, got far. Oh, I don't remember. I mean, she got far enough. Um, yeah. She wasn't voted off like week two. Yeah. Um, but again, that's the narrative, and I <laughs> and I I don't I don't know what I'm supposed to I get. Sort, with this girl. I sort of love in Dancing with the Stars when they have like a really big name, or or somebody that's known for something, and you know they're going to be a bad dancer. Generally, like I always give the example of Billy D. Williams. Yeah. Like Billy D. Williams could barely move, and on his very first week, he did a Star Wars themed dance because you knew that he wasn't going to make it to week two no. or three. So it's like we need to get the Star Wars out of the way. Just <laughs> Look, we know what you came for. Because, like, for example, when Alfonso Rivero did uh, uh, right. a Dancing with the Stars, it was the opposite. You knew he was going to make it far. So the Carlton, you knew they were going to do the Carlton eventually. They could hold so it. there was a buildup. So yeah. it's like, are they going to do the Carlton yeah. today? Are they going to do it today? And then, you know, I think it was in the middle or, I mean, it was really up there. They yeah. did the Carlton and then it was worth every moment. Yeah. Similar with, actually, with Liz Berkeley when they yeah. did the caffeine pill. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Um, and he's still the co-host, right? Yes. It's him and Julianne. I Hoff. mean, how, how did they ever think that he shouldn't be the co-host? 
I still want Tom Bergeron, but if we don't have Tom, right, we don't have Tom. Alfonso Ribeiro is the way to yeah. go. Yeah, you know Tom Bergeron, I believe deserves some type of accolade, recognition, a lifetime Emmy or something, something for yeah. hosting Dancing with the Stars and America's Funniest Home Videos. Which now Alfonso yeah. Ribeiro, I think Alfonso Ribeiro is just getting Tom Bergeron fired. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love Carlton. You. you know what? This is like really weird. Even though I saw the Fresh Prince from beginning to end, and the Fresh Prince was more of our generation. Yep. And, you know, obviously that was the peak of his popularity. When I think of also Rivero, I think Silver Spoons Same. first. Same. Even though I saw Silver Spoons as a little, little kid, I, it didn't have the same impact as, you know, both in terms of popularity and, mm -hmm. and me watching right. as Fresh Prince. But I still think of Silver Spoons. I think there's also something to the fact that Silver Spoons was syndicated. So we were watching like two episodes a day, yeah. five days a week. And also during the Silver Spoon <laughs> years, he did the famous commercial with Michael Jackson. That's right. So, you know, who could forget that? That's right. So <clears throat> Alfonso, Ribeiro, Alfonso Ribeiro is one of those people like Kim Fields, like LeVar Burton, that they've been around for a really long time. And they're not in your face in terms of popularity. But when you sit down and start thinking about it, it's like, what? These people yeah. have been around for like a and while. Never stopped and, they, working. and they've never stopped working. Because like Kim Fields is another one. Yeah. Kim Fields is still around. You know, she's never been in like the top rated most popular show in the world, but she's still there. And even still, she has two, you know, iconic characters that she's associated with. You yeah. know, Tootie from Facts of Life and Regine from Living Single. Yeah. So, I mean, for somebody who's never been in, like you said, you know, the, the most popular show in all the world, she's got two iconic characters. Yeah. <laughs> so does Alfonso Rivera. Yeah. And he, we're still, you know. Yeah. And LeVar Burton, you have a Yeah, LeVar, <laughs> LeVar Burton deserves a, I mean, we've talked about it several times in the show. He deserves like an exhibit in the Smithsonian. Oh my God. Can we petition for that? <laughs> like, Let's start that. <laughs> That's what we're going to use our power for. We're going to get him. A, you know what Sony helps exhibit. about him is that I, I hear he's like a really nice person. Mm-hmm. Because it'd be terrible if, like, you find out LeVar Burton is, like, a total, you know, no, asshole. I, well, a friend, I, a friend of ours met him. Oh, yeah? Super nice guy. Yeah. Like, super nice. Actually, I, just a random party that right. he was at. Hey, LeVar. <laughs> Can you imagine walking into a party and just saying hi to everybody? Whatever? I was like, is is that LeVar Burton? I feel <laughs> LeVar Burton is one of these people that you have to say the whole name. Yeah, you can't just say LeVar. <laughs> like, what's up, LeVar? No, that's weird. <laughs> it's like, that's about the same person. No, that's like, you, also, you have to say Kim Fields. <laughs> I don't think you could just call her Kim. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Tootie. You, yeah, but then that, you know she may not like being called Tootie. Right. right no, right. I think she's embraced Tootie. <laughs> right. But you, but at first you want to be respectful. So right. Kim Fields. Yes. Right, Kim Fields. Yes. Kim. I wonder if she could really skate. <laughs> at the time she did. I don't know. So. Anyway, bueno, let's move on to the hard topic of the week, which, I mean, I, I think we knew we were going to talk about, um, which is the school shooting. Yeah, we like to we like to ease into these things. Um, you know, we are a topical podcast, and we talk about, you know, we, we really believe in the listen, laugh, and learn, and we, you know, you guys like to laugh with us, but we, you know, there's certain things that, even though they're hard to talk about, we have to it's talk about. It's so now. So let me ask you this. So obviously for, I mean, I, I feel that everybody probably heard it at this point. Um, on Wednesday, Tuesday or Wednesday, there was a school shooting in um, Georgia. And it was in a school, excuse me, about an hour outside of Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I read that, that I read school shooting and I saw Atlanta, I immediately called a very good yeah. friend of ours whose daughter is in high school. They both in, are now. In outside of Atlanta, yeah, because they don't live in Atlanta City proper. They live a little bit outside. So, I mean, that's how it is nowadays. That like you see something like that, and you immediately call. Like, is everything okay? Um, and thankfully, everything was. But there was a school shooting, and it was a 14 year old boy mm -hmm. um, who um, shot up his high school, and unfortunately, two students died and two teachers. I and think there were um, nine injured, right? Yeah, nine injured, um, <laughs> hundreds traumatized. Yeah. Um, so let me ask you this. When you hear this type of news, 
mm-hmm. of a school shooting or a mass shooting because that's just what happens now. Right. What is like? What's your initial reaction? Like your first, like what you think about? This is gonna sound weird, but my first reaction is, "Fuck, we have to talk about another one of these on the show." Yeah. You know what I was thinking earlier today? Do you realize that our second episode, mm-hmm. it was mm-hmm. either our second or our third, yeah. was about... Um, Stoneman. Yeah. Yeah. The shooting in Parkland. We have been talking about these incidents happening literally since we started this show. Yeah. That's what I think about. And I know it, it sounds like, you know, oh, really? No, but that but I put it in that context. That I'll never forget that when when Parkland happened... I mean, again, it was like our second episode. I remember you and I were like, are we going to talk about this? Because we were still sort of figuring out the identity of the show. No, we, were, we didn't even have the cadence yet. Because at that point, we we're still thinking we're going to do two. We're going to do every other week. Right. And so you were like, if we're going to do this, we need to do this now. Yeah. Like, and and it, we really made that decision like day of. Yeah, I remember. Like, yeah, I, yeah. Was, I think I, I was, like, was about house. to leave your apartment. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, if we're going to talk about this, we have to do an episode about it now. Yeah. Um. Because we were still trying to find out the direction of the show. And we're like, is this too heavy? But then, yeah. you know, obviously we did. But Yeah, that... It, again, that's the first thing I think about it. And again, within the context of, of the greater conversation, right? Because the, like you just said, we've literally been talking about these incidents for seven years that we've been doing this show. Sometimes we have to talk about more than one a year. Yeah, you know what I mean. No, because sometimes we don't talk about it, but because we're like, you know what, we just kind of like we let let's let's not Mm -hmm. dwell. No, but but now, Mm -hmm. but unfortunately, because of the frequency, right? These things don't make the news cycle like they used to. No, because I think about Columbine when Columbine happened in February February of ninety nine. World stopped. The world stopped. Mm -hmm. Like the world stopped, and those images of that shooting of like those kids running out of school and all that circulated media for weeks and months you know what and I th- now this happens they put it on the news and the next day it's gone you know what I, I i think about when these things happen after you know i think like fuck we gotta talk about it again i remember something that you said because you know you you start to i mean i have nephews that are in school you know what i mean so it's not like they're 30 um you know and i i think about like just it's it's awful these poor children you know that this keeps happening and this and that but i'll never forget what you said and i don't know i I, you may have said it on the show i always stop and say to myself you know what if they didn't if nothing changed after sandy hook yeah then it's just another. Remember, I, I, yeah, I've said that several times. It's just another very sad, very upsetting, very angry incident of, of of needless violence that didn't have to happen. But if the thought of those little kindergartners getting you know annihilated did mm. nothing, two weeks before Christmas, kindergartners slaughtered sixteen of them, then. And then, there's you know, people saying there were crisis actors and stuff like that. Yeah, that's where we are. Yeah. So um, that that and, that and that just angers me more, right? Because it's one of those things where it's like, it, it, like, you know, you always you always say like, and I don't, and, and this is gonna come out, but you know, you always say things like, you know, lo que tiene que pasar es esto para que el cambio para que el cambio venga, and then it happens and it doesn't come. Right. So, but let me ask you this though, because when when we when I have these conversations with people, I, I like to ask these questions because obviously. Everybody knows I'm very political. I'm very politically active. You know. um, and, you know, I haven't really talked about it too much on the show because we decided not to really talk about politics. Right. Um, but I mean, we still but, do every now and then. But this isn't but, but No, but in terms of my political work. Oh, okay. um, but I am still very involved in political work. And, you know, I've, I've always been very into, like, civic engagement and all that type of stuff. Um, so, obviously, when certain things happen or certain events, you know, mm-hmm. come about... I realize I have a different perspective than a lot of people on them. So I always like to like ask you, you know, mm-hmm. your perspective on things. So as let's say a, a lay citizen, you know, somebody who cares, you're not necessarily politically active like me, but you know, you care, you care about your community. You care about, you know, the, the, the well-being of people, so on and so forth. What do you think is the solution or, 
or a way a deterrent of these type of you know shootings these mass shootings whether it's in a school whether it's in a store because the thing is that you really aren't safe anywhere oh no it happens at a nightclub it happens uh, at a, Walmart. Walmart. It happens a movie uh, theater, movie theater you know yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't pretend to have answers. Mm-hmm. It's not me. I think that you can start with what they call, you know, quote unquote, common sense gun gun control reform. reform. Um, you know, I don't know why you need an AR anything. Mm-hmm. You know, because again, I, unlike you, I'm not. I'm I'm not. I wouldn't say I'm pro gun, but I'm okay with with people having guns within reason. Mm-hmm. You know, I do. I look. Whenever I go up to North Carolina, I know people up there go hunting. You know what I mean? You can't mm-hmm. go hunting without a gun because mm-hmm. otherwise it's just taking pictures <laughs> of an animal, right? Like, you know, like, I'm totally okay with doing that. <laughs> right. But, but then it's not hunting, right? You right. know, it's, it's, and again, these are people who go hunting and then they take the animal home and they eat it and they do, you know, so, so it's not even just for trophies and things like that. I can't fathom a world in which, you know, you're going out deer hunting with an AR 15. You can't. No, you can't. But look about that, picadillo. Yeah, you know, like that's not that, that's not for that, right? Mm-hmm. I also believe that you know you should have you, you can have like a handgun, right? Again, for protection, right? Mm-hmm. And I think those are and you know look have the background checks, right? Have you know I know that you've mentioned to me a couple times, you know the the gun show loophole, right? Where it's like if you get a gun at a gun show, they don't necessarily because it's like an it's like a it's a loophole. No, I know, but it, but it, they're a private reseller. It's a private reseller, so it's not like you know it's not a, a store, a, a store, a store that license has to do, store, right? That has to do due diligence. Um, you know things like that. I think that if we just do that. You're gonna cut down on a lot of uh, on a lot of things, and again, people are like, "Well, but if you know, but bad people always, you know, are gonna find a way to get them." You're right, you're mm-hmm. right. But if you create a deterrent, right, and let's say you're talking about ten people, you know what? If out of those ten people who are going to go find this this gun or whatever this this weapon, because of these roadblocks you've put, four of them can't get to it. That's four less. That's four less. Yeah. Right, like I'm okay with that. It's similar to, and I and I use this example a lot. It's similar to the drunk driving laws. Mm. You can still go and get drunk and get behind the wheel of a car. Mm. I mean, nobody's, you know what I mean. Nobody's standing outside of every bar monitoring what mm. you're going to do. But are there people who don't drink and drive because of the laws that are in effect? Mm-hmm. That can, you know, it's a deterrent, mm-hmm. right? It's a deterrent. There's still people who are going to go and do it mm-hmm. who don't give a fuck. But you have a deterrent. Do you? agree or what do you feel you know what what are your feelings on like in this particular case and this is coming about more um they're holding the father responsible he was arrested that happened- do you think the parents should have any type of criminal liability because the thing with liability of parents is under the law un- for a tort i'll say a negligence mm-hmm. uh parents aren't Responsible for the tortious acts of their minors, minor children. But under criminal, remember, uh, Mm -hmm. civil and liability are one thing. Criminal is another. Under criminal, you could be charged for, um, it it could be, you could be charged for like attempted, for aiding and abetting, for accessory, accessory, for, you know, a a, a plethora of different, um, well, Charges. I know that recently, and I don't remember the name of, of the parents or the child, I know that recently there was two parents who... Yeah. who so there is precedent right now. Yeah, yeah. Very, very, no, re, very, no, right, saying, right. very recent but precedent. But what I'm saying is, do you agree with that? Um, You know... <sighs> because then the question is... I'm of two minds. The question is, in this particular case, he was 14 years old. He was very young. What about if he's 17? He's still a minor. This is why I'm like, I'm of two minds with it, right? Mm-hmm. Because on the one hand, you know, let's say there's a situation where like the parents know something's up with the kid and they've tried to get him help and they've tried and the kid still does, does you know, goes out with, with this type of a, of a plan, right? Mm-hmm. In that scenario, I don't know that I would hold the parents culpable, Mm-hmm. Because they have demonstrated, like we've tried, we mm-hmm. we knew this was a powder keg, and unfortunately, it went off despite our best efforts. Right? I don't know that that was the case here, but I'm just speaking in, in general. No, that in certainly generalities. wasn't the case here. Okay, but I'm just speaking in generalities, right? However, if you have a parent who is un descuidado with their kid, mm-hmm. well, guess what? You are responsible for your child. 
Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, there are... So you do believe I, I, that there should be, depending on the case, some type of accountability on for the parents? I believe so. Okay. I believe Fair so, enough. especially in this case, because you know what? We're not talking about... Not that it would be better. We're not talking about a kid who showed up and grabbed, you know, went to the tool shed, got a machete, and went... Right? We're talking about a gun. And that's something that, you know... An AR-15. <laughs> well, but... That has to be kept under lock and key. Right. Book. And like, which, there's, but, there's but, certain... but it's very big. Because it's not like, well, you know, the dad had a handgun. Right, right. And, uh, you know, he snuck magnum. it in his yeah. bag right. and or in his pants and nobody saw it. And then he went, you right, know, right. did some shit. Right? right. You're talking about a very large right. weapon. Right. Again, there's a level of de cuidado there, yeah. so to speak. Right. And, you know, look, I am also a firm believer that we are all ultimately responsible for our own actions. Um, I think, obviously, when you're a minor... To varying degrees, I, I believe that the closer you get to 18, the more that culpability mm-hmm. increases, right? Like, I'm not going to hold a five-year-old who fires a gun mm-hmm. culpable the same way a 17-year-old. Do you think if we have the ability of holding the parent, depending on the matter, responsible um, or culpable or liable in some way, do you believe that there should be some type of laws or regulations that state that if you, as a parent, have weapons in the house, by law they need to be um, put away in a certain type of way? Well, there are, aren't there? I mean, isn't isn't that it has to be kept, like, you have to keep the gun separate from the bullets and you have to keep everything under lock and key? Is not it, necessarily, no. There oh, I not, was under the impression that not that like was, a federal statute. Oh, okay, that. I was under the impression that was like a... a There's not a federal a, statute. A regulation of no. sorts. So that's just like an honor system. Mm, just about, yeah. Oh, okay. So then, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so then, yes, I do. But then that ties back to... You know, I mean, think about it. If you have gas in your house for your stove, it has to be regulated and monitored by the state. You know, like and, and, that's the thing. That's the thing is like, guys, you know, there's no such thing as absolute, you know, and, and that's what it comes down to is you, you know, in these instances, what I, what I think would happen is, you know, it'd be like, well, that's my kid. I get to do what I want with them. And that's my Second Amendment. And that's my, 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 my. And that's great. But guess what? Your kid took your gun out of your home and went to a school and killed other people. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, and now you're messing with someone else's mind. Yeah, right. Yeah. So where does your my end and their my begin? Yeah, it's it's a very complicated and multi layered um, issue. So, I, and I will say, when, I, I mean, uh, I mean, I'm asking you all this because you know I'm I'm, I'm going to go in my rant in a minute. I, 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 I'm sure the rant is coming. I'm sh- I've I've been doing this show long enough. But I will say one one final thing. You know, in addition to all of this. Many times what winds up happening is like, you know, what's a mental health problem? Mm -hmm. Fair, right? Fair enough. Obviously, because I'm going to make a very general statement. I'm not a therapist, but nobody in their quote unquote right mind just kind of wakes up one day and decides to do this, right? Right. Especially, especially, you know, a 14 year old. Right. There's something, there's 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 something, of course, there's a mental health aspect of it. Element. But don't come to me with, oh, it's a mental health thing and not a gun thing. Okay. And by the way, two things can be true at once. Of course. And then not offer any type of mental health services or make it near impossible for people to get help, right? Mm -hmm. Because you can't tell me that, oh, it's not this, it's this. And then when I say, okay, great, so how are we going to solve this? Like, well, I mean, I don't know. Right. Right. So then you just don't want to, you you, you, want to ostrich this. Mm -hmm. You know, you just want to put your head in the sand until the next news cycle Mm -hmm. and then move on. Mm -hmm. I'm going to lean back. I just think (laughs) that um, before I go on my rant, um, I mean, as a parent, you should not be in fear of dropping your child at school. And I, I, um, I really like my child's school. I think my child's school has good security, uh, as best as it can, um, you know, from locked doors to uh, an officer. I don't think I talked about this when I was substituting. Uh-huh. Remember? Oh, yes, I, yes. Remember, yeah, you I had to do a lockdown drill. Oh, yeah, no. Tristan had to do a lockdown drill in preschool. Okay, but I've never had to do that. Yeah. And not only that, that was when I was substituting for for the, the class with the children with Down syndrome. Mm-hmm. And all I could think of was, oh, my God, if something was to actually happen, like, first of all, I'm responsible for these children, but then these are also children who, you know, their mental, the mental capacity is, is different than, than your typical child. And that's an added 
you know, just worry and concern. Like, and I will tell you, I'm in my, a man in my 40s. And having to be in that bathroom with all of those kids and their assistants with the lights off, just waiting for the, the announcement to come on. Mm-hmm. And I knew it was a drill. Yeah. Right? I knew nothing was happening. Mm-hmm. But then they also were like, because this was post Uvalde, their whole thing was like, you have to, it because, how was it? In Uvalde, what happened was that the, the the shooter pulled a fire drill, and so people thought it was a fire. And they basically were doing it, so it's like, no, we're going to pull the drill. Don't go out. Don't do anything mm-hmm. until the principal comes out. And again. the most we had to worry about was a fire drill. And then the thing is, and had, with those, that was those, a, those active shooter drills, um, how do you explain that to a preschooler? Right. To a first grader. You know, there may be somebody come who comes to your school with a gun and is going to shoot up the school. Like, how do you explain that? Right. Right? Um, but we can explain that. Just don't tell me about drag queens. Uh, yes. Um, <laughs> God forbid. <laughs> God forbid. And, like to play um, a dress up. And, um, you know, I when I drop my child in school every day, I think about that every single day. Just like I'm sure every parent does. And I just think it's, it's so sad sad that that is a reality it's so funny for super impactante that, having to do that drill yeah 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 yeah. i remember when tristan did them in preschool that i remember his preschool his preschool class was in a portable and the the, the bathrooms were even smaller and i'm like how are you gonna get 16 kids in that bathroom wow so and they didn't yeah and yeah, i remember there were, there were some kids who peed out of fear yeah or, or because they didn't know what was going you know they have fear they're preschoolers they're four or five years old and they're being told sit here in the yeah, dark and so, shut up yeah so all right i'm gonna lean back and let you go <laughs> <laughs> Three, two, we, one, we've contact. wound you up enough <laughs> so every time a school shooting happens or a mass shooting happens it's always the same thing there's the people who don't believe there should be any type of reform to gun laws that people should just be free to have guns according to the second amendment and then there's the people who want to ban all guns and usually these two polar ends are the ones who sort of hold hostage the conversation and nothing gets done the real reality is that most americans are for comprehensive background checks for red uh, flag laws and for um waiting periods after somebody applies for a permit most americans are in line with this while i believe 100 percent in gun reform obviously there is a mental health aspect to this that cannot be ignored so two things can be true at once we need comprehensive gun reform we need for people to have access to mental health and we need vigilance for these people that have red flags that are that are literally flagged by the fbi just like there were here but i think that the biggest problem with mass shootings in the united states that a lot of times people don't talk about is the culture that we have here in the united states let me just repeat and i'm not the only person that said this the United States is the only country in the world where mass shootings like this happen. No other country has this issue where there's mass shootings. No other country. And I've always thought that a large culprit to that is socially People in this country are obsessed with guns. They are obsessed with guns to the point that guns and weapons become part of their identity. They become part of their personality. And that is a problem. If you believe in the Second Amendment and you want to have your own gun for your own protection for whatever reason, that's fine. We have laws. We have an amendment that protects your right to do that. But we are obsessed with gun culture in this country and no other country. You have society, a good portion of society, obsessed with guns to the extent that we have. And that is a problem. And if you don't think that's a problem, all you have to do is look around the world. No other country has this problem. No other country with similar um, democracy or republic, no other countries with similar, uh, you know, economies, no other countries with similar societies, no other country has this 
problem. It's only a uniquely American thing. Again, I don't think, I think that even if tomorrow they pass the most strict gun laws and they got rid of everything, of like they said guns are illegal. Mm -hmm. I don't think this will fix the problem. I think mental health is a huge part of it. That alone is not going to fix the problem. It's a multi-layered, multi-pronged sort of, I don't even know if the right word is solution, but approach to trying to diminish this. But again, United States, there are obs people here are, are obsessed with guns. And even though I don't care for guns, it's not something I uh, like. I don't want to near me. I don't. I don't care for guns whatsoever. I understand that. You know, it's your right. For God's sake, I studied this in law school. You know. You know. I I can sit here and tell you as somebody who was a constitutionalist and studied the Constitution and read hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of Supreme Court cases. Right. While I may not be care for guns. I believe in protecting your the Second Amendment and your right to bear an arm, even though I don't believe it. I, I don't necessarily believe in it, Subscribe but I believe yourself. in uh, Americans having that right under the Constitution. With that said, as somebody who has studied this and has read this and is well-versed on the legality and constitutionality of it, there is not a single person in this world that can convince me that a civilian needs to have an AR-15. No one, absolutely no one. So if your whole argument is like, well, 2A, 2A man, you know, 2A. Yeah, 2A was written at a time where what we had as weapons were muskets. <laughs> and the real reason why the, the Second Amendment was added to the Constitution was because at the time of the Constitutional Convention, the United States was still under threat of England and was still under constant attacks of England. And because the United States did not have a military at that time, right, they believed in militias right well organized militia as stated in the constitution so people can protect at that time the young country right so don't come and tell me that an ar-15 is protected under the constitution at the time that that was written under for, with muskets right again you want to make an argument that you should have a right to bear arms based on the constitution on the second amendment that's fine but i mean you are fooling yourself if you think that people that really understand the constitution or people that believe in this think for one second that an AR-15 is something that can be protected, right? It, 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 I, I've said this to you many times. I don't know if I've said it on the show. The single most powerful organization in the United States is the NRA. It is the NRA. The NRA has more powerful that it's more powerful than any president, than anybody in Congress than anybody. It's the NRA. Like the NRA runs the show. Yeah. Right, whether you like it, whether you don't don't like it, whether you agree with it, whether you think I'm full of shit, they do, and you can be in denial that they don't, but they do. They run the show. They run the show. I mean, it's the only it, it's the only reason that the Second Amendment seems to be the only uh, you know constitutional right that has this absolutist. Yes, right, right. Um, actually, that's a very good point. That's a very good point because we're talking all the time about limits to the First Amendment. Yeah. Right. You know, is this, is this, are you, you know, is this freedom of speech? Is this not freedom of speech? Are you impinging my freedom of speech? Freedom of religion? How is this freedom of religion? Is, am I aware, allowed to wear this because of my religion? Am I not, you know, but not the Second Amendment, right? right? It's the NRA. The NRA is the single most powerful organization in the country. And it just is. And you could say, no, it's not. Yeah, it is. It is. And again, what makes me so sad about this and just it's just tragic that as a society, we have accepted that mass shootings are just part of life. It happens. We posted about we post about it. We're sad. Thoughts and prayers. Two days later, back to the you know back to your regular programming. Then it happens again. We're sad. Thoughts and prayers, and then again, repeat. We've accepted as a society that these mass shootings are just a part of life. And that is really, really sad that as a country, as a society, we have to live in fear. And that's just a reality. And if people, and when I mean people, I mean as a society, if we really cared and we really were serious about fixing this and trying to curtail this, 
as a whole, instead of pursuing whatever political argument you are, are on or whatever political ideology on both sides, yeah. you're on. Because I always say, as I said a second ago, the problem is that this gets this argument gets hijacked by people that are like, you can't control guns, guns are my right, and then the people that are like, ban all guns. Right. Right. And that's not where most people are at. So this this argument always gets hijacked by these two extremes and nothing gets done. Right. We obviously as a society don't care enough to end this. We put a man on the moon. We fixed other things. We fucking fixed the whole ozone layer. Right. <laughs> but not this. Right. Because then people's egos get in their way, their platforms, their political ambitions, their ideological ambitions. Oh, no, because if I let you do this and you're going to take that and then, you know, it's going to be filled with yeah. you people and you people are going to take the over and then slope. the, the fear mongering that, you know, you're going to come in my children and this and that, the whole stupid argument over and over and over and over again. Oh, you're attacking me because I believe in this and knowing God and this and that and the same bullshit right um and it is what it is and we're gonna talk about it you know the next time it happens on the show and then we're gonna talk at the time it happens after that and the time it happens after that and on and on and on and on and that's just you know the reality of you know living in the united states yeah so 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 no. so so don't be mad when you hear people from other parts of the world say oh because you know in america there's so many mass shootings and like we don't want to go to america or we're very cautious about going to america don't be mad when people say that because you know crime can happen anywhere crime mm -hmm. happens you know everywhere you know all countries have a certain amount of crime crime can happen anywhere a tragedy could happen anywhere a mass shooting could happen anywhere but mass shootings it's like systematic right sort of sort of on a schedule like they happen here, that happen all the time, all the time, all the time. Boom, boom, boom. One after another after another. That's not normal. And that doesn't happen in the other other parts of the world. And, you know, for those of you saying, oh, well, you know, I've been to Mexico. Yeah, but you're talking about the cartel, right? A completely different right, set of circumstances. Right, right. Or you're talking about a place that has, those are criminals. you know, or like maybe in the Middle East, or there's some type of political unrest where they have kidnapping people and all that. You're talking about something else, completely uh, something else, right? Um, so don't come with that whole, but, you know, in Mexico, people get murdered. No, they don't. It's, it's, it's the different. cartel. It's something, a completely different argument. Um, but yeah, we've just, as an American society accepted that no yeah you know this is bad it sucks i'm sorry it's sad um but you know let's move on to the next thing and watch the real housewives yeah it's um you know the onion the the the, 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 the satire website used to be well used to be a newspaper has taken to whenever this happens posting yeah, on their instagram and actually what started off as on their website and it's probably there right now there's an article and it's literally just the headline and it says, if only there was something we could do, says country, says only country where this happens with frequency mm -hmm. or something to that. I'm probably butchering the, the the headline, but it's like every time this happens, the onion literally just pulls it out and posts it mm -hmm. because to your point, if only there was something we could do. Well, mm -hmm. other, other countries. And I understand, look, you can't compare the U S to say like, you know, well, the, the Maldives doesn't have it. You know what I mean? Like just size wise. It's right. That, right? Just, just compare it, <laughs> compare it to, Canada, the United Kingdom, Australia, New Zealand. Yeah. Right? Comparable. Comparable. Right, right. Japan. Look at these other countries with comparable economics and societies. And that doesn't happen. I remember that not too long after I went to Australia, maybe a few months later, there was sort of a terrorist attack. Where somebody went, and I think they were like in a cafe, and he shot up the cafe. In Australia. In Australia. But it was a terrorist. Like, it was terrorist related. Oh, yeah. Before that, there had not been a shooting in Australia since the early 90s. Mm -hmm. The early 90s. And in Australia, there was... A shooting in the early 90s, They did the government did a buyback program mm -hmm. where millions and millions of people, and, and it wasn't that you couldn't have arms, but they did a very aggressive buyback program yeah. that if you gave in your, your weapon, um, they would give you X amount of money. And there hasn't been a shooting in Australia, yeah. well, uh, until this right, issue, right. like 20 some years later, and that was terrorist related. And Australia, you know, they have similar rights that we do. A lot of these other countries, you could bear arms under different circumstances and different, you know, different limitations, but they do have the ability of bearing arms. Right. Um, so it's not a situation like, well, you know, the United States is the only country where you could have a gun, you know. Um, 
And, and you know, and, and like many things, there's big money involved in this. The, these weapon manufacturers have a lot of influence and a lot of lobbying power in Washington. So, you know, th- there's even that aspect. Yeah. It, it, so that's why I tell you, this is like a multi-pronged, multi-layered issue. Because, again, even though I, I've said it a hundred times, I don't believe... Like, I'm not a gun fan of having a gun. I've never had an interest in having a gun. I also realize that gun reform, while very important, is not going to fix this by itself. That alone is not going to fix this. Because this problem is way deeper. It's societal. I think we are obsessed with guns in the United States. It's it's, it's a problem. It's a really, really big problem. But, you know, it's just the, the... I mean, just think about... Like when you're anywhere public now, you hear something you're and you're like, <gasps> yeah, a bag of chips could just like, you know, get stepped on and you hit the ground. Yeah. That's why I always like, I have, I have a habit. I've had this habit for years of no matter. I, I do it very quickly, very swiftly. Nobody knows about it. I, it's just something that I just, it's, it's become second nature for me. Whenever I'm somewhere, I always look, look to see where the exits are. You know, I did not do that until you told me you did that. Mm-hmm. And now when I walk into places, second I, nature, I, I literally just start like, I just a quick scan, just second, a quick, like, boom, 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 boom. Second okay, nature. great. You always want to look at the exits to see alternative exits than where you came from where right, you came in that will be blocked you, that will be blocked because that's where everybody will go to or that's where they're coming from right 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 always alternate exits that's something that again when you start doing that over and over again there comes a point that it's just second nature that you go in a room you scan you're like, eh, you know there's yeah. the exit because i've always thought that in a movie theater yeah. like in a movie theater there's not even a shooting like a fire or an emergency right, right, right. everybody's gonna come in everybody's gonna go down the ramp and then around to where they came in through and i'm like there's literally two exit doors that say exit by the screen yeah and everybody sees the exit sign and i will bet you nobody will go through there it's not the first and it's, it's it's literally lit <laughs> It's got an arrow. Yeah. Yeah. And nobody will go through there. Uh, always look at your exits. So, Well, that's the learned part of today. Always look for the exits. Always look for, always the, look exits. for the exits. Because if not, you're going to go in through the outdoor. Yes. And, and that's just an album title. Remember I told you that? Yes. I was like, that would be the name of my first album. If I was a singer. <laughs> that's, the, that's your first album. It would be In Through the Outdoor. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what my first album. My first album would probably be Eponymous as we as we've established but i know what the second my second album the would eponymous be. eponymous oh, release by yes, Ismaliano. yes but my i know what my second album would be what called. would be currently entering the 15th minute oh yeah do you know what i think has been the greatest second album title ever what i think is like the yeah the greatest second album or sophomore album yeah, yeah. <laughs> ever was by daniel beddingfield remember I mean, I remember Did, the album. Daniel, I don't remember the name. Second first impression. Ooh, that's good, right? That is good. Second first impression. Oh, that is really good. Daniel Bedingfield. Damn, he had such. He had bops. At border. What? Because of, well, I mean, he had like a horrible accident. Yeah, like, he did. <laughs> but that's not why he hasn't sung again. No, I know, but I'm sure it put a kink in it's his plans. Because I remember when his sister came popular, oh, Natasha. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking full yeah. sunshine and all that nonsense. I was like upset that I'm like, why is she famous and not her brother? Because her brother, you know, he, his songs yeah. came out first. Yeah, he, he I, I really that, liked that him. first album of his is really good. I don't wanna run away. That's such a good song. Such a good album. That's such a good song. Uh, yeah, I love um, uh, the what's uh, the James Dean song? It's called uh, James Dean. Yeah, no, but I'm I'm I'm, I'm missing the melody. I'm just, dun, 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 I blown it again. Dun, 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 no, that's not the James Dean. No, no. That's dong, 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 dun, 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 dun. I gotta get through this. That's I gotta get through this. No, the James Dean song was no. It was um. Oh, you know a song from his album I liked? She's coming back on Friday. Oh, She's coming oh back on Friday. I'm going to listen to this on the way home because I had totally forgotten this album. Yeah. Okay, anyway. All the bops. All, All the bops. bops. <laughs> Daniel Bedingfield, you get a... <laughs> yeah. I mean, my, listen, well, listen to last soda. Listen, we're, we're on our, our last soda moment. So, you know, who do you... Do you want to go first? So, or? I'm giving my last soda this week to... Um, well, I mean... Again, big fan of the Olympics. The Paralympics um, yes. are concluding this week. So I'm actually going to give my my last soda to Paralympians. Um, you know, 
the problem with the Paralympics is that they come at the heels of the Olympics. So by the time the Olympics are over, people have moved on. And the Paralympics, I think, doesn't get as much attention in terms of media coverage as it should. Um, because really, these athletes that are Paralympians are just, I mean, it's hard enough to be an athlete you know, especially at a world class level and a competitive level, you have to devote your heart and soul and everything into it. Yeah. Imagine being a Paralympian that you are maybe, you know, you don't have legs or arms or you, you know, whatever it may be, and you still are a world class athlete. I mean, have you seen the people that do the bow and arrow? I was just thinking about them. They do it with their feet. Like that is, oh my God. And their mouth, like, you don't and, talk inspiring. No, and and the one that I watch and I like, I watch they're marveling at it are like the the wheelchair basketball. Oh, that's so cool! Oh my god! Like, oh my god! <laughs> so you know, I think these people deserve the world and they deserve all the recognition. So my last soda is to the Paralympics and Paralympians. That's a lot of soda. 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 Oh, yeah, there's a lot of soda in the world. Yeah. Well, they've worked up the thirst. Yes. Yes. Yeah, a they, few calories will help them. Yeah. Yeah. The recuperate. Um, so my last soda is actually going um, to the Muppets. Oh, yes. All the Muppets. All the Muppets. All the Muppets. Um, the Muppet Thai? The, the Muppet Thai. No, well, Muppets is already plural. Oh. Yeah. Um, but I like Muppet Thai. I like yeah. it. Um, this year actually marks the 70th anniversary of Jim Henson and like when he first started like having the Muppets show up on TV. The first one was Kermit, right? The first one was actually Rolf. Rolf. <laughs> What is el, el viejo, el, el, pe, el perro. Okay. El perro. He was the first one. Um, He he showed up on uh, some, I think it was Jack Parr. I always forgot. What was the eagle looking one? Sam the eagle? Yes. Mm-hmm. The, the, the eagle looking one. Go. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, we're, we're at the 70th anniversary of you know Jim Henson and his Muppets, essentially. And I have to say, I know we've talked about the Muppets on this show many, a lot. <laughs> but this year alone, I have this newfound love of the Muppets on social media just because I, I've said it. I follow Cookie Monster on social mm-hmm. media. He posted something today. He Notice how I said he, not they. No, he. Cookie yeah. Monster posted today. Mm-hmm. But no, who he else did. did you no, expect oh, no, no, no. to post it other than Cookie, Cookie Monster. Monster? He posted a thing today. Where Cookie Monster has a social security number. I'm, I'm just sure. letting you know. <laughs> I'm sure of it. I mean, it might be one, but yeah. I, I'm sure of it. He posted a thing of like him at the office at his at his desk on the computer, mm-hmm. and he's like, you know, oh no, yes, me take meeting. No, it's okay. Me eat during. Mm-hmm. Me do lunch at desk today. Like, and I was like, oh my god, I'm Cookie Monster. Like, he was. On the mm-hmm. phone, on mm-hmm. his computer, eating at his desk. Like, mm-hmm. it was great. Then there was this other clip on this this Instagram account called Muppet History, mm-hmm. which was like, it started off with Ernie crying because mm-hmm. he felt he wasn't special enough. And then Bert comes in and oh, tells him. Oh, I've seen that. Oh. Yeah. Oh, no, oh, no, I've seen that. I hadn't seen that till today. Oh, you've never seen that? I hadn't seen yeah. that. I mean, it's 70 years of footage. Um, You know... They're just, I'm just glad the Muppets exist. You know what's really interesting about they, them they is are, that the Muppets, that's why like I feel the Muppets have been in very good hands. Yes. Right? <laughs> literally. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's not <laughs> what I meant, but that's literally. Um, but the, that franchise, if you will, has been very well kept because if you think about it, the Muppets have not changed, but the Muppets have adjusted to change They've changed yes. with the times without really changing. That makes no sense, but it makes all the sense. Because the essence of who these characters are hasn't changed. It's just how they express themselves according to the time. Mm-hmm. You know? I mean, for God's sake, they had, an, they had a Muppet, I think it was in Sesame Street in, uh, in South Africa, that had like HIV. Yeah. They had then a Muppet here that had autism, yes. like, and on and on and on. Like, there was a Muppet here who was experiencing homelessness. Yeah, I mean, and it's done in such a gentle way. Yeah. I, I mean, that's why, like, I feel that the Muppets have never had a period of, like, oh, those were, like, the dark days of the Muppets. Right. Like, whoever was in charge of the creative direction of the Muppets right. were, like, it's always been sort of enough, but not too much. Right. That's like their social media. The social media accounts could have gone completely the wrong way, right? But no. But they're so perfectly curated. I mean, Elmo became a thing last year. You know, eh, and are all, you okay? And all he did was ask, are you okay? And that speaks to the staying power. And he's a new Muppet. 
Yeah. Right? Well, and, we consider him look, a new Muppet. But in the grand scheme of 70 years, yeah. he's a new you Muppet. You know what's so great about Elmo is that Elmo came out like after our time. Like yeah. by the time Elmo came out, we weren't no, watching no. Sesame Street. And we love Elmo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, we didn't grow up on Elmo. I mean, but how could you not? Elmo, Elmo, I think, came out like right after, like when we just. We were like in elementary, but end of elementary. Like, yeah, like yeah. just yeah. edged out of yeah. the Muppet like age in terms of Sesame Street. Um, because think about this. Like, when Tickle Me Elmo came out, we were in high school. Yeah, because that was the Rosie O'Donnell show. It was right. really popular, yeah. Right, but when Tickle Elmo, Elmo came out, he had already been out for right, a right. few years. Right, right. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's perfect. The they just make you happy. They do. They do. Nobody's going to tell me that they're not real. I'll fight a bitch. <laughs> Wait, what were we saying? We were saying that uh, Piggy. Piggy should... should uh, be... Be a, a contributor. A uh, correspondent. A correspondent. Uh, in uh, the LA Olympics, yes, in 2028, she should be a correspondent with Snoop Dogg. Like, there's no question about it. Like, And now I'm thinking about them with Martha Stewart. Can you imagine Miss Piggy as a correspondent in the Olympics, but specifically talking about the equestrian races? <laughs> Because in my mind, she will go dressed. Oh, in like, like the Kentucky Derby. In, or like, no, in equestrian gear. Oh, okay, with a little hat. The little yeah, thing. Yes, yes. Yeah, and okay. like the whip thing. Yeah. That, like in my mind, she's going dressed. Yeah, you know she's dressing yeah, for this. Piggy doesn't underdress. <laughs> yeah. No. Okay, again, we've talked about this before. <laughs> if anybody's listening who is part of the IOC and NBC, this needs to happen for LA 2028. Yes. Miss Piggy's the correspondent. And you know what? You can have the idea. We just want to be invited to one of the events. Yeah. Where I, where she's at. Como se llama the... I forgot their name. The the rock band? The uh, Electric Mayhem. The one with the big lips? Dr. Teeth of the Electric Mayhem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because it's so funny. Because she's a Muppet, but she sort of looks real. Like, a Janice? Yeah I, know what, yeah, I know what that woman looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, she kind of looks similar to a lot of women on reality TV yeah. now, and she's been around since the 70s. Yeah, yeah. Wait, so your favorite is Miss Piggy? No, my favorite is Cookie Monster. Okay. Cookie Monster with uh, a side of Ernie. Okay. Ernie? Okay. Yeah, my favorite Muppets are, are more from Sesame Street. Right. Listen, Cookie Monster had a food truck. He did? Yes, and I, yo me reía como un estúpido watching those shorts. <laughs> I mean, it was cookies, obviously. No, because he had a partner, uh-huh. they, and they would like. So the way they would do it is like they would cook a new food every every episode of this was like a short, and then they would cut to like somebody who actually made that food at an actual restaurant. And they would show how they make, mm-hmm. you know, the paella or whatever. So it was. I mean, I love it. I, I look. Give me Cookie Monster all day long. Cookie. Okay. <laughs> cookie Monster was thinking like the Oscar. <laughs> I want this to happen. <laughs> Can we? You know what? We should have a year where the Muppets just do everything. <laughs> they host the Oscars. They're at the Can Olympics. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the Muppets being the moderators of the presidential yes. debate? Sam Eagle. <laughs> have Sam Eagle. What's more patriotic than that? <laughs> or if we're going to go the route of Kermit, he has to show up in his little trench coat thing when he was a reporter on Sesame <laughs> Street. <laughs> That would be amazing. You know what they should do it this year. I think for, that if the they, Mu- they should do it for the vice presidential. Nobody cares. I think that if the Muppets were the moderators, I think that that just will give world peace. Like you know, the Muppets are moderating the presidential event. You know what? Who cares? Like love everybody, vote. You know, yeah. like it's it, that's the solution. <laughs> the Muppets. The Muppets. The Muppets are the solution to everything. Yeah, yeah. They, we'll leave it at that. We are. So, everybody, we hope you listen, laughed, and learned. And as always, remember to grab your pastelito, your croqueta, and your cafecito. And, and very soon, oh, yes. very soon, we are going to be giving you guys um, some exciting news, um, things that are happening with the podcast. Yeah. Um, Something a little cool. A, a little cool. A little cool. Um, big news and changes are coming with the podcast. Not to fear. 
our show will continue on Fridays and our audio format will continue. We're not going anywhere. We're not going anywhere. Our audio, when you get our audio on the weekend on Fridays, it's going to be exactly the same, but there's going to be big changes that, um, and Ish and I are still going to be here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm being replaced by Miss Piggy. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, that'd be okay. I'm okay yeah. with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Say goodbye. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know. She'll be too demanding. <laughs> She'll be like, it's too cold in here. And I'll be like, that's true. Piggy, it's not happening. Um, but no, we she'd, have, be, she'd be okay with that because if it's too hot, then she becomes bacon. Okay. Yeah. And then she starts sweating. Right. It's, anyway. <laughs> but we have some big changes coming that are awesome, exciting. But we'll fill you in on that yes. a little bit later. Yes. But we just wanted to let you guys know. So have a great weekend, everybody. Hey, mi gente. Bye. Bye. Pero Let Me Tell You is co-hosted by Darian Borges and Ismaeliano, produced by Ismaeliano, and our theme, Pero Let Me Tell You Freestyle, is composed by Michael Angelo Lomlaplex, the official gay guy. And don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review on iTunes. And, uh, you know, it's back to school time, and we have got our favorite student straight from a day at school with us today we've got tristan he's back Hello. what's up how's it been i cannot resist smiling right now why not i don't know why i just feel like smiling good that's a good thing it's always a good thing to smile i guess i mean maybe not at a funeral but it's it's a yeah. good thing to oh, smile okay yeah 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 but that's a good thing that you you can't resist the urge to smile i say never resist that urge okay do it smile Smile. I command you to smile. <laughs> oh, so how have you been since the last time we talked? Last time we talked, you were telling us about your trip to Italy. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been a couple it's, weeks. Yeah, it's been about like two months. Damn, that much? Yeah. Cunho. Wow. Well, time flies quickly. Yeah, time flies when you're having fun, as they say. But you're back to school now, and I know that's not necessarily fun fun, but, no, you're, no. <laughs> but you're in fifth grade now. Yeah. That is crazy. Okay, it's crazy to me because I, I remember when you being born. When we started this, I was like, like pre-K. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. You're right. And now... Seven years ago. You are embarking on fifth grade. Next stop, middle school. Yep. See, I love it. He can't. He really is. He's smiling, ladies and gentlemen. He can't stop. So the thought of middle school makes school, you smile, huh? School movie, the sequel. School. Middle school. There you go. There you go. So it, and it's a, it's a trilogy, because then you have high school. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And then college. And then college. Well, some people go to college. Not everybody so. does. Yeah. Yeah, so it could be a quadra. Why am I acting so different today? Quadrally? I don't know. Maybe it's because you just took a shower and you're <laughs> you're feeling fresh and clean and mm. and bubbly because of the soap. Oh yeah, I took a, I, t- I took a shower like ten minutes ago. Yeah, exactly. You're, you're, this that's why it smells so fresh in here. It's not me. I came from the gym. Oh. <laughs> There's nothing fresh and clean about about me coming out of the gym. No sir. No, no. Only sweaty and and stinky. Yeah, as a rule. Yep. <laughs> I, I swear I can't resist smiling. Good, good. So I mean, what, how's how's the school year started so far? Good. Yeah. Any anything crazy happened yet? I mean, I know it's, I know it's only been really. like two weeks, but it's been like three. But... Oh, okay, okay. What's it like two weeks? Not exactly two weeks. All right. So nothing crazy yet. Nothing. No, no, like you know, weird s- stories out of the, the fifth grade. No. No. All right. Ah, uh, but you know what? We're already in September, and you know what that means. You know what's around the corner. I actually don't. Halloween. Yeah. What are you What are you doing for Halloween? What do you mean? What are you gonna be like? What are you thinking of for a costume? Oh, uh, probably um Luffy. Luffy. Oh, from One Piece. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's a pretty cool costume, it's, and it's not the difficult costume either, right? It's a with the straw hat with the the denim shorts. Oh and... no 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 no. Oh oh. I'm gonna be a specific Luffy. Dress Rosa. Oh, and what does that one look like? Basically, he has two hats, a shirt, a sash, sunglasses. Uh, I don't know what it's called, like an old man beard, that, like a fake one. Okay. And short jeans. Okay. Why two hats? How does one wear two hats? Oh, because he's supposed to be in disguise, like in that part. But how do you... I only have one head. How do I wear two hats? Don't know. You don't know. Well, well, you're gonna have to show me when you do it. And I'm gonna have to figure it out. You are gonna have to figure it out. You are gonna. Yeah, you're smart. You'll figure all that out. It's, you know, I, I have faith in your ability to figure out how to put on two hats. You're gonna put a hat on a hat on a hat. Nope. 
No, nope. a hat on a hat. Just a hat on a hat. Okay, fine. So, you're, so that's what you're going to be for Halloween. Are you going to have? Because um, I know sometimes you have like one costume for school and another one for no. for Halloween. No, no, it's always the same one. It's always the same one. Yeah. Oh, I thought there was like a year where it was like for school you couldn't dress up as, that as is some, something. So no? complicated. It's so well. That would be so complicated. Listen, I have had Halloweens where I've had a couple parties and I have a different costume for each party. But that's because I already have multiple costumes. Okay. Mm. That's because I already have several costumes. <laughs> and also, my costumes fit from year to year because I'm not still growing like you are. So, like, you know, if you were to put on last year's costume, it would probably be very short on you because you've gotten taller since then. I've actually probably shrank. Uh, why? Because <laughs> as you get older, you shrink. After after a certain age. Not, not at my age yet. I'm not, I'm not old shrinking age yet. But after a certain age, you kind of start to shrink. Yeah. Well, I know that, but I didn't expect that like 40. No, that's what I'm saying. It's like in, I think it starts like in uh, your 70s, maybe. Like you kind of it's like bone density and all that. That was like 65 or something. Sure. I don't know. I am not a doctor, ladies and gentlemen. Me neither. Yeah, but you seem smarter than I am. So I'm going to go with your 65. Done. Change approved. Thanks. That's it. CDC. Tristan says it's 65 years old when people start to shrink. That's it. It's official. <laughs> True. Yep. 100%. 100%. Confirmed. Confirmed and then some. I might find the cure to cancer soon. I mean, listen, why not? Somebody has to. Somebody's got to find it. Might as well be you. <laughs> I guess. That'd be so cool if you did, though. Because at, at this age, at 11, that would be awesome. I'm not 11. I'm 10. You're 10. Damn it. I was going to say 10 and then I... Well, I'm almost 11, like three months. Oh, I doubt. Okay. So, see, I was... Okay, I was wrong, but you're but you're getting close to 11. Yeah. Oh, my God. December's only in three months. Yeah. Yeah, I'm telling you, Halloween is like four weeks away. I'm exaggerating, and Christmas is like you know three days after that. That's how it feels. Like yeah. when when time like just flies like that. That's exactly how it feels. I'm not even going to ask you about Christmas yet because that's too far ahead in advance. So I'll stick to Halloween. Thank you very much. Doesn't feel that far in advance. Probably not. Shh. No, no, not too fast. No, not yet. No. <laughs> No, I don't want to. You can't make me. No. What? What? I don't want to rush through the year yet. Nope. Well, me either. Oh, okay. All right, all right. Uh, oh, what? Okay, I don't know if I've asked you this before. What is your favorite Halloween candy? I know it's still always hmm. off, but just popped in my head. I think it's a tie between Reese's and Butterfinger. Mm-hmm. Ooh. I like them both. I love Reese's. Like the peanut butter cups or the pieces? Cups. Cups, yeah. I don't like Butterfinger. The pieces, Reese's pieces are just peanut butter M&M's. Mm-hmm. They just, sure are. Smaller. And they're delicious. And they're E.T.'s favorite candy. Uh, I like peanut butter M&M's better. They're just, they're bigger. They're bigger. They have yeah, more peanut butter. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I, I'm a peanut butter lover. I love peanut butter. Like, there's you no You know my tomorrow. dad hates peanut butter. Yeah, your dad's weird that way. I don't get it. I love peanut butter. Put peanut butter with chocolate, peanut butter and jelly, peanut butter by I, itself. Peanut butter is good on everything. On everything. Like, yeah. Put Except it, cheese. It does not sound good. Yeah, maybe not steak. <laughs> I can't I can't imagine it tasting too good on, on, like, you know, just a big old T-bone. You just put some peanut butter on it. It might taste a little weird. I guess. But you know what? I'll try it. I'll give it a shot. I mean, yeah. if somebody if somebody got it and they're like, hey, you want... I'm not trying peanut butter with cheese, though. No, that's... No. that Yeah, I have to agree with you. That's the line. That's where I'm gonna draw the line. I'm like, no, 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 no. There's no need for this. Do you like Swiss cheese? I hate Swiss cheese. I don't hate Swiss cheese because I like all cheeses, but it is not. It's my. It's one of my least favorite. I guess. Yeah. I don't like American cheese by itself, but on on stuff like I don't know burgers, it's good. I agree, hundred percent. Like I don't want to eat a slice of American cheese just oh, by we're itself. We're with so many stuff today. We are. We're in sync, baby boy. Woo woo woo. You and me. But yeah, you throw that on a burger, I'm in. Actually, you just put a ham and cheese. I'm in. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not that picky. You know, and it's nice and cold, and it doesn't really taste like anything, but it's still okay. Yeah, I'm not picky. Like with sandwiches. No, what's your favorite? That reminds me. What, what does it remind you? That you're not picky? No, yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite You said sandwich? ham and cheese. It just reminded me. Oh, que rico. No, I want a ham and cheese. Do <laughs> you think we can get one after we're done? Just, you know, just it's go downstairs. It's 10 p.m. I don't think so. <sighs> Fine. Fine. I'll play by your ham and cheese rules, sir. Uh, wait, so what's your favorite sandwich, though? I, I've never eaten a sandwich other than ham and cheese. Hmm. Well, I have, but I just completely forgot how to do it. Like... <laughs> 
<laughs> You've never had like a, a Cuban sandwich or a croqueta preparada or medianoche? To be honest, not really. No? Sir. I mean, I've had a few sandwiches with mayonnaise, but that's it. Like just bread and mayonnaise? No, bread, mayonnaise, oh. and ham, and cheese. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, there's nothing wrong with bread and mayonnaise, but that's just like, especially if it's white bread, like that's just going to stick to your roof of your mouth like I'm crazy. not trying peanut butter with mayonnaise. Ew. Okay. So that's two things. That's two. Not with cheese <laughs> and not with mayonnaise. Actually, I don't really like mayonnaise that much, to be honest with you. I I, I only uh, like it on very few things. Like, there's a yeah. sandwich my mom makes with ham, cheese, and mayonnaise. That's good. I don't know anything else that's good with mayonnaise. Yeah, mayonnaise for me, like, there are people who love just put lots of mayonnaise on things. No, for me, it's like, just put a little bit, just to you know, I like moisten. I like Kewpie mayo a little bit, but I don't like normal oh, mayo. Oh, Kewpie mayo is so good. Yeah. But Kewpie mayo is not just available everywhere. Stupid QP mayo. <laughs> Not being available everywhere. Even though it's it's one of the ingredients in one of our uh, our our dishes that we do at Shojo's Dojo this weekend. Oh, what a nice sponsor. Yeah, see? Well, listen, I own both properties. I, I well, co-own with your dad, but <laughs> I can promote our stuff on this show all day long if I wanted to, and no one will say no. Wah, all the power. That's about the only power I have. It's not a lot of power <laughs> in the grand scheme of things at all. Uh, so what else are you up to? I mean, I, I, I love how I've been silent for like the past minute. Well, yeah. Like I've been dead silent. No, you've been thinking. You've been contemplating. Putting together an answer. For what? Or formulating a question. Which one is it, Tristan? <laughs> contemplating or formulating? I don't I don't know. I think you do. I, I don't. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, anything else happening? Any any other interesting things? How far are you on One Piece now? Episode 886. Out of how many episodes? 1,117. <laughs> Sir, that is a lot of patience. You know, it takes like 18 days to finish One Piece. Like, if you were to do it 24 hours a day? Like, no sleeping, no bathroom breaks, no nothing. Just... Oh. The TV in front of you, or whatever you're using to watch it, right. like, if, if you were to sit through the whole thing... It would be 18. 18 days. Wow. I yeah. have about four days left. Maybe but, but if you don't go to the bathroom, then, you know, your bladder will just explode. And that's not a way to watch anything. I, I have no response to that. I do not know how to respond to <laughs> Like, I don't want to go to the hospital and be like, sir, how did your bladder explode? <laughs> well, you see... I was on day four of watching One Piece, and I had decided I was not going to pee... And here we are. Like, that. I don't want to have that conversation with an ER doctor. No. No, no. There are so many other conversations. That would be so awkward. With a capital A, yes. Yeah. Be like, it was all because of one piece. And because of one piece, I didn't pee. And now I'm here. One piece of bladder. You don't have anymore. That you don't have anymore. That's right. Yeah, one piece exploded. I wonder how long you can hold it in, though. Like, not you specifically, but just, like, a human. Like, I wonder how long a human can go without... I mean, the longest I've held it was, like, I don't know, maybe 12 hours? I don't know. You, good lord! <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I forgot, okay? Is your bladder, like, the size of, like, you? Like, it's you're, you're just all bladder inside? <laughs> like, it's just one big bladder. Yeah, no, 12 hours, that's a long time to hold it. I don't think it was 12 hours. I was just... Oh, okay, okay. I don't, okay, I don't okay. know. Okay. I don't remember. All right, all right. Well, next time, time it. Next time, start, you know, just a little clock and get and get back to us. Okay. We want to know. We're like, how long how, how long before he just bursts? But Again, I, I have no response to that. But, but I don't want you to burst. I don't know how to respond to that either. Well, I would hope you would say, I don't want to burst either. <laughs> I might. I'm you, joking. I'm joking. <laughs> okay, well... I don't want you to burst. I don't know if you might or I might don't want not. To either. But okay, okay, okay. All right. Cool, 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 cool. Ay, Dios mío. All right. Well then, sir. I saw it coming. Mm-hmm. The, the episode's ending, isn't it? Yeah. We're going to wrap it up. But I do want you to come back because, again, you know, I want to hear about how the cost. First of all, I need to see how this costume pans out because I'm now I'm curious about two hats, if nothing else. <laughs> Quite frankly, I need it's to see like the. It's like a fedora on a straw hat. A fedora on a straw hat? Yeah, it sounds weird. It sounds random. That's fantastic. Random is oh. fantastic to me. 
Same, I'm same. like, hello, we've met. You know, random is fantastic for me. Like, I the more random, the the better. I more no, enjoy I actually it. never knew that. You never knew that. You've been not paying attention, have you? Not really. So. Mm. But yeah, no, definitely, we gotta have you back to so we can talk about you know your, how your costume went and how that you know all looked, and then I definitely want you back before the end of the the season so we can talk about the holidays and you know just put out there what you may or may not want for Christmas in case you know your dad. All I want for Christmas is you. Oh. <laughs> no, I was just saying. I wasn't saying. Ladies and gentlemen, it's actually Mariah saying. Carey. Yeah. <laughs> No, I'm, I'm Mariah Carey undercover. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Haha, <laughs> We fooled you all. <laughs> all right. All right, man. Well, as always, thank you for swinging by. I can't wait to have you back again. You know, I love having you on. You're like the actually you're the only other person who's been on the show lo- like many times. Like aside more f- than like three times. Yeah. Yeah. Aside from you and your dad, like it's it's me and your dad because we do every episode except for when it's guest host and then you. Like, you are number three of the person who's been on the show the most. Think about that for a minute. Contemplate that. Oh, no, not again. Yes, we're back to the contemplation. I don't like that. (laughs) All right. right. Well, in that case, we're going to wrap it up, all right? Thanks for swinging by, my friend.